Hey guys, welcome to a Rope and Ranch tutorial. So today, I the other day I was doing a stream, and during the stream I was trying to explain um, breeding for GP and how breeding for GP works and how to create a template to breed down your different offsprings. So to do this, uh, I have created a lovely uh, GP breeding guide here. Um, I will be editing this video to kind of show you the different breakdowns of all those different things and how we're going to add to the document and how we're going to start it. So the first thing that we have to do is pick three pairs that are unrelated and make sure that they are fully trained. So the other day in the stream, I actually did this. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move all of the ones that are not part of our breeding team and I'm going to show you which ones are which and I'm going to move them out and move them into a different pasture so that we can do this correctly. So that includes all of these babies. Um, I'm not using these guys and so we're going to start just mass moving everybody out. Which could have been something I did before the stream, but... Okay, so we're going to send them to my breeding pasture here. Just get them out of the way of my Aztecas. who's left. So we're not using these two or these babies here. Autumn is honestly one of my favorites, but um, I'm not ready to get rid of her yet. This will also be my first video with um, this new setup. So hopefully everything works the way that I'm wanting it to. Okay, so our pairing is gonna go like this. I am going to be doing J right here, which I'm actually really glad I have some Appaloosas in with this mix here. I wish that I had some paints, but I do not. Um, if you do, if you are doing a breed that is going to be br uh, painted, appied, and solids, be very, very careful with this algorithm because your offspring might re result in having a, um, a Pintaloosa offspring and you don't want that happening. So you'll have to make sure that your pairings are specific to what you guys are doing. So we're going to be breeding J to Lily, Bass to Moon, Paloma, to Mars, and Smoke, to Sherry. So I made sure all of these guys are already trained. And so our next step, once you find all uh, three of your breeding pairs, I said three, didn't I? I meant four. Once you find all four of your breeding pairs, um, you will want to start breeding and you're going to be aiming for both a male and a female of each offspring. So let's start out with, I'm gonna grab all my females and I will need moons at some point. We're gonna purchase some for the convenience. because this is going to take a good amount of breeding and stuff like that. So I had some horses sell yesterday, so it'll, it'll all be fine. So let's get Sherry 
prepped here. Now, I don't know if all my males, let's make sure all my males have Coggin tests done and that they are able to breed. So smoke here. We've got Jay, which I know he is because I've already used him as a stud. We've got Bass. And I've got Mars. So smoke is done with his Coggins test. That one's Coggined already. That one's Coggined. This one is not. Okay. So Sherry is going to be breeding to... Who did I say? Smoke. So theoretically with my math, this should result in a offspring that will be 416. So, does she have worms? Let's get these worms dealt with before we use her. Now, I will be using moons, or not moons, I will be using horseshoes in this case to be getting the male and the female. Um, obviously, if you don't have horseshoes, this will be a little bit more complicated, but that just adds to what we're doing here, um, obviously. Okay, so our first offspring is a female. Now, it is very important that you may name these pairs based off of which pair they came off of. So this is my female, and you can either do this where like each pair is named with a certain letter, you can just denote a letter into their name. So for instance, this is my last pair on my list here, which I labeled as D. So I could either name this um, Sunny, and then put a D, get it, Sunny D. Um, or you could name it with the name like Deanna, you know, something like that where you, you just know which pair this came from. I'm gonna do Sunny D, cause that's, that's cute. And then let's check that GP, and I was correct. So we're gonna do 416 Sunny D, nope, D. Okay. Now it's also going to be important that all of these male and female offsprings at the same time also get all uh, trained. So you will have a lot of training, which means that you either will have to be having a lot of moons for training um, manually, or you will have to have a lot of moons to be sending off to the trainer and a lot of time and a lot of coins. So however that is going to be working. Um, we're gonna grab Sherry again, and we're gonna do another offspring with her. And same thing, we're gonna be doing smoke again. Okay, so we got another female here, but we're gonna switch this over to a male. I'm gonna call him um, Midnight, and it's gonna be from pair D, and should also be 416, yep. So 416, Midnight, D. Gonna go ahead and do the taming. very important that if you are going to be training a horse eventually that you start that taming immediately as a baby and that you go through all of the gait training and um, halter training in order to maintain them. Now we're done with Sherry and we're done with Smoke so both of them I'm going to move out of this pasture and I'm going to move them in with the rest of my uh, breeding pasture. This is going to get very full. You're going to have a lot of horses with all of these pairings and what you're going to be doing here. So we're going to get them out. They're done. They've contributed exactly what they needed. 
So now we've got this 416 baby, and this one's going to become a male. So let me go ahead and switch it over so you guys can start seeing how this is all going to work. Um, horseshoe market, sun squash flip, and he's going to probably be on the last page because this is sorted by gender, or sorted by age. There we go. So we're going to flip. Okay, so our next pairing here, I've got Lily. Now Lily is going to be breeding with Jay. And they are my higher uh, pairing here. So we're gonna take Lily to Jay. Now if you're obviously wanting to go for color too, I would highly suggest that you work through this where your pairings that you're pairing up together are going to be um, the what you want color wise um, that's going to add in a little bit of compli complicatedness but it's it's what you go for so we're going to drop a baby out of this one and I'm probably going to do this video in two parts so we're going to do this first part of the square and then I'll do the second part of the squares in another video because it is it's going to get complicated so this is going to be from my pairing number one, which is going to be A. If my calculations are correct, this is going to be a 419 full. So 419, I'm going to name it Sundial. Just came to my brain because why not? And we're going to name it A, but I meant, I meant to do an A there, but I did a 1. But let's check that GP. Yep, 419. So 419 Sundial. No, sundial. Oh my gosh, sundial. A. So this is our first one as a male. We're gonna need now to get a female. Also, make sure that if you are following our YouTube channel, that you also follow our uh, Twitch. We will be doing streams every Wednesday at around 5 or 6 p.m. And um, that'll include the weekly updates, things that have gone on within the game, um, new things that I'm adding, all that fun stuff. So we're going to go back to Lily, and Lily has one more baby to give me. Jay might have ran out of energy. I thought that he might. Gotta have energy, Jay. Okay. And since technically this is going to be his last cover, I'm going to age him up. And I'm going to move him out. So he is going to go here into my breeding pasture. Now, I am so scared to release this video because if you guys start t following in this... You know, the GP race is going to move faster because now people actually have a um, an order to follow. And that will probably speed things up. And it'll give the people that have no idea how to GP race a little bit of some information. And it'll give the people that do GP race already maybe a system that they don't already use. Or maybe it'll give them the system that they need to use. And now they're going to be faster which is terrifying. Um, if you're working on registration as well, you're gonna wanna make sure that all of these uh, adults as you're breeding through are going to be registered. I'm gonna check through that in a second once I, I'll, I'll do that once I finish this and birth a baby here. Okay, so I got another male, but I want it to be a female. So this one I'm going to name 419 Topaz. Whoa, no G Force experience. Sorry, my G Force experience jumped up on my screen, but it's going to be uh, an A. So let's get it tame. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know a lot of people are already GP racing those Morgans, but they're finding a lot of hard problems with uh, inbreeding. This is the path that you can take that will keep you from inbreeding, which is pretty amazing. So uh, this is Topaz here, and I'm going to go ahead and flip the gender on Topaz. And this is also where GP release comes in, in the sense with your teams and stuff like that on what you actually want to release for other people to have. So I probably wouldn't GP release within 10 because with this algorithm here, you're going to be jumping at least five for every sheet that you do. Every time you do a sheet of, um, of what I'm going to show you here, this is going to jump you five points on the GP race every time. So I probably wouldn't GP release for at least, I'd say at least 10, maybe even 15. Gives you a nice, uh, you know, front up on everybody else. So on registration, I'm going to come down. I know my Aztecas are, nope, I thought they were on that side. So here's my Aztecas. Um, now I'm going to quickly grab these four and double check that they are um, DNA tested so that we can DNA test those babies. Um, yep, genetic test. Genetic test. Genetic test. Now, again, if you're wanting to do this for GP race and for confirmation race, you're also going to have to do the 10 competitions per offspring, which is going to become a, whoa, zoom, zoom, uh, which is going to be a whole nother um, conundrum, to be honest. So we're going to grab Mars. We're going to grab Bass. Who else do I got in here? This one. Okay. And then, um, so those were finished. I'm going to do Paloma as my next one here. Let me check on Jay. Jay is not. And then let me jump to that other pasture real quick. So in this breeding pasture, I want to grab Sherry, Jay, Lily, and Smoke. Make sure, get their DNA test done. Lily is already done. I don't need to do her. Okay. Genetic test. Now, another thing, um, so this one has a genetic test, but it's not back, uh, registered yet. Okay. Okay, so I can close this pasture. I can close this pasture. Let's refresh this. And then in here, we're going to go to the babies. Um, with some of these, like so with the Azteca registration, you can't have a um, painted or Appaloosa marking offspring. But what you can have is one of the parents inside of the other registration. So for instance, I'm going to register like Sundial here will not be able to be registered in the Azteca Association, but will be able to be registered into the Appaloosa or the, um, the Spotted. Yeah, Spotted is what they call Appaloosas, I forget what they do but yeah for some reason no spotted means paint gosh I hate the way that they do that I still own some of these that are in sales who else I saw one more there we go and so if I go backwards and I go to registration and I scroll down on this side, you'll have the, nope, nope, wrong side. 
Scroll down on this side. Yep, the Spotted Association. Okay, so I do Spotted and Pintail. So Sherry can go in here. Jay can go in here. Moon can go in here. But that will qualify on your offspring then for them to have one parent registered because they technically have had that one parent from any off uh, registration. It just has to have one registration. So that'll allow you to come back and register some of those solid offsprings if they didn't get that gene and stuff like that. So we're going to continue here. We've got two more pairings to do. So I'm going to grab Moon, and Moon is going to go to Bass. Whoops. And then I'll kind of explain the ending of the video, and then I'll end this video, train up my other horses so you guys don't have to sit there and wait for the training to happen, and then I will explain to you uh, the next part in the next video, which will I will link in the end of this video here on YouTube. Okay, you're getting worms. So you're in the Spotted Association. I'm actually very, very proud of our Twitch and our YouTube channel. Um, by the time that this video gets released, we will officially have hit affiliate on uh, Twitch, which is amazing. That means that I can start streaming a lot more and actually earn um, some ad revenue, which is not a lot of money, um, but it's something that I can still put back towards the game. Okay, so this pairing I have labeled as B. So this one is a male. I'm going to name him Hunter. And he should be a 419 as well. So Hunter and then B. And we'll go ahead and get him tamed. And then we'll also get him DNA tested so we can register him. And I think with this batch, I'm actually going to also do the confirmation because I actually haven't been looking at my confirmation. But if we're going to be doing this, we might as well be uh, doing the confirmation in all of these horses. So let's do a DNA test real quick. And I'll, I'll, let me, let's take a look at where our confirmation is for this batch. 73 for this one. 75. 75 so we're not at an awful confirmation but we definitely could get that up more and confirmation does contribute to um, competitions so keeping that confirmation up is amazing and it definitely helps out so we're gonna go ahead and grab moon one more time and we want to throw a girl now off of moon I already dewormed you I thought did I deworm her I thought I did but we're gonna go to bass. Yep. Yeah, I did deworm her. Okay. She's just recovering. Another tip is if you are ever wondering if your horse is ever starting to recover from worms, you can check to look at their weight. Ooh, cool, we got a female. Um, we're going to name her Violet. So this is going to be a 419 Violet B. Okay. Going to get that taming done. And honestly, I mean, yes, I'm using um, horseshoes here to get this done, but to me, this is not going by so slowly that this isn't like something you can get done with like one step a day. Obviously, the training and the competitions is going to be the hardest and like the most haul part about this, but that's going to be what's going to be the hit or miss on getting that GP to increase. 
So that's going to be the most time consuming, which if you're using your horse trainer to benefit the three every six hours, you could technically get it all done very quickly. Why am I going to the vet? That's not what I wanted. I wanted to hit the move button, but my brain was not thinking. Okay. So we've got one more pair left, and that's going to be Paloma and Mars. Now, Paloma and Mars, I believe, is... They're not my lowest um, grouping. I think Group D was going to be my lowest GP group. Um at the 416 but this group is going to be a 417 so we're going to breed to mars here Ooh, i did not check that obviously because these guys are related so paloma isn't related to Mars. Mars is a child of Paloma, I think is what it just said. No. Oh, are they siblings? This makes it a little bit more complicated. We got all this way without having an issue. They both have fabled as a mother. Okay. So what I could do is Sundown is Let's take a look real quick what's available for Sundown. See if I can solve this pretty quickly. Because I thought I figured this out last night, but maybe not. So if I breed Sundown to the highest purebred and delusion, which is at 449. So we're going to do 373 plus 449 divided by 2 plus 2. We're going to be at a 413, which I could then switch out Mar or I could switch out Paloma in my my algorithm here and do a 416 divided by 2 plus 2. That'll get me a 417 just as much. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's make sure real quick that Mars isn't related to this stud because I did use a public stud for Mars's parent. Where's Mars? Mm, ooh. Yeah, it is a different parent. So they would not be a related offspring. So let's do that. It's going to change my chart a little bit, but not by much. We're running low on moons, which will mean that the horse trader is going to be hard, but, or trainer, but um, it's going to be still something um, that we can work with. Okay. And cool. Um, I needed a female, but that's fine. We're going to name this one Sienna. And we'll gender flip this one. Did I get a, a 412? I did. Okay, so we got a 412. 
Um, let's go ahead and tame. I will let's make sure I got an Azteca too. I did. Okay, not a, not one of the other offsprings. So we're going to go ahead and do a, I thought this had this prepped for you, but I guess not. It's okay. Um, I'll go ahead and send this one off to the trainer, which will include, I'll have to um, go get some more moons from the banking history. I have so many horseshoes because I was testing a feature. Um, I was testing the Pawnee's Mark, which ended up breaking, and when it broke, every time you use the Pawnee's Mark, it's two horseshoes, so I was sitting there using it over and over and over and over again, and my whole account was draining, and I was like, this is not working at all, so I just gave myself a hundred, and I was just sitting there refreshing the page, working on the code, and trying it, and then saying that didn't work, and then trying it again, and then... Oh, that didn't work, and so it was it was a lot of fun. It very much drained my account, but I also can use it for tutorials and stuff and explaining uh, features and stuff to you guys. So, pretty, pretty helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and gender flip first. And we'll purchase some moons. This uh, banking page is moving so much faster now, um, which is definitely helping. And I need Sienna. Let's go to the second page, I think. So Sienna's going to be a female for us, and we're going to send Sienna. Where is she? Here she is. We're going to send her instant to the trainer, um, so she is ready. So we're going to fetch her out of the, uh, the barn, because that's where she's currently residing. And we're going to move her to this Azteca pasture. And we're going to remove Paloma. Put him in the breeding pasture. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do 412 Sienna get the Coggins test and the DNA testing And then we're going to breed to Mars. Cool. And they aren't related. So we want to throw a boy and a girl back to what we were doing before. We're going to throw a boy and a girl from this pair. And I think what I want to do is after I finish this page um, for the GP thing I want to go ahead and do a um, I want to go ahead and, and add some paint markings into my my line here so 417 I'm gonna call this one bronze and this is gonna come from breeding pair C and this should be a 417 
for 16. Well, that's okay. It might bring us down a little bit for our GP jump that I was wanting to do, but um, the whole point is you're trying to move up and you don't have very high to begin with. So we'll work through it together and I'll show you. Okay, one more and let's get that DNA test done. And so our next one, I actually should probably name this a feminine name. Um, Bianca. Okay. That way I know that that's the girl. And let's breed Sienna with Mars one more time. And then we can toss those two out. And I'll show you what we're going to do with our eight offsprings that we have created. So we want a male. So the first one's easy. You're always like, oh yeah, I got a male. And like, obviously if I got two males in a row and I didn't have those horseshoes, I could choose between those two males and be like, oh, well I like this color over this color. Um, and I got a male. Cool. So I'm going to name this one 416 Bruce, and this is going to be from pairing C. But, um, in that case, you would be able to choose, oh, I like this color over this color, and that's going to be what we kind of do for this next, um, step here. And I'll kind of show you through the form, because that'll save you a lot of moons and heartache. Um, obviously... If you don't have the horseshoes for the next step, um, it'll take a little bit longer and probably a little bit more dedication, but it should work, and I will show you all how that works in the next video once I've gotten all of these offsprings trained up. So I'm going to move Sienna and Mars out, and it looks... I don't think I got the pairing from B... Um, a DNA test and I need to do that so we're gonna go to the vet for these two and then we're gonna move this one to the breeding pasture and then we're gonna move this one to the breeding pasture and then with this page I'm gonna go back to registration okay you need a Coggins test but it looks like I got the DNA test done on both of them I just didn't register so we'll come down to registration right here It's loading. And I should be able to get all of this set registered. I wish that I could have a double click there where I can... Oh, I can. Oh, I can. Cool. So it got them all. So let's go look at that pasture. And I'm going to kind of explain what goes on next. So we should have a registration button next to everybody. Oh, nope. Hunter does not. Do you have a DNA test done, Hunter? You do. Why are you missing? Your registration button, Hunter. Is that you? Yeah, it is. Okay. So. What you're going to do next is you're going to pair them up in the sense of almost like an X cross. So you're going to breed female A to f male B, female A to male C, female A to male D, D, yep. And then you're going to go, okay, and then you're going to go female B to male C, B to D, B to A, A, yes. And so you would do all of those pairings. When you do that, that's going to result with you having 12 offsprings. Now, if you use the chart that I'm providing here, 
what you're going to end up being able to do is determine what those GPs are going to be of those offspring before you do the breeding. And if you plan it correctly, you should be able to then determine that if you're choosing two from um, in, in a certain way, then the offspring will not end up having the inbreeding problem. Now, if you're wanting to do this where it's also the best for money, if you breed all 12, now you've got all 12 that will have a higher GP and you will be able to sell those when you're ready for the GP release, which will most likely be higher than everybody else in the sales. So it's all up to how you want to do it for um, money and just what you think financially you can handle on the game. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video for now, train these guys up, and I will be back after I've done that and show you guys all of that. I will have the other video right here, so by this point the video is out. So go ahead and click on this uh, right here, and you will be able to watch the next video in this series. Thank you!